Well, hello there. It has been a little while since I have had a chance to sit down and chat with you all. Um, I was trying really good at posting like weekly or near weekly videos. And then um, I had like some kind of chronic illness flare and my energy levels have just been so crap for the last couple of weeks that it's been really hard to do anything. Like, I've barely even been knitting. And I just decided to put off the episode until I had something that was actually worth showing. So, I'm here now. Episodes are still going to continue to be sporadic. I do have some things that I want to work on. But I'm also having to work extra hard to manage my energy lately. Um, the last week and a half... All I've really been able to do is lay in front of the TV. Like, I haven't been able to read. I haven't been chatting online. Um, I've barely been knitting, just like a couple rows at a time. This is the first day that I have felt what my current normal is. So I've really been struggling lately. I'm still waiting to hear back from doctors and specialists. We still don't know what's wrong with me. I currently have one GP that is basically doing some kind of like diabetes dog whistle even though there's nothing to back that up. <laughs> Most of my tests are coming back normal or they come back abnormal and we don't know why. So there's more testing involved. Um, so yeah, it's just been very stressful and confusing all around and I haven't had the energy to knit but um, I do have some projects that I want to show you like um, I was going to do a haul for this, but it's actually been so long since that yarn came that I've just used it. <laughs> um, I need a, and it was mostly yarn to finish up current projects anyway, so it's not something you guys haven't seen before. Um, I haven't been working on the flamingo sweater. I put that off because I had too many things on the needles that I needed to work on, and a lot of my projects were just too similar. I had a lot of sweaters going and I just needed to take a break from those larger projects. So I do have one finished object this time. These are the apology socks that I made for a friend of mine. And this is the, I'm sorry, it's taking me 10 million years to make the sweater for you socks. <laughs> and these are made out of Lang Yarns Mille Colore Baby Luxe. It is merino super wash with um Stelina in it and then the toes heels and cuffs are made out of knit picks stroll in uh pomegranate stroll glimmer and pomegranate so these are just my basic sock recipe the only difference is that this heel turn is also in the knit picks because this yarn is a single and this is applied yarn and I wanted to make sure that that heel had a little bit more durability than if I had used the single yarn. Normally I wouldn't use singles yarn for socks, but it just seemed too perfect for this project and this combination. So we're making do and I'm going to warn the recipient that they do need to be treated a little bit more gently than the socks I normally give her. So, these are the only finished object, and then it really only makes sense to show you the forever in a day sweater, right? So, this is the Bi Pride hoodie, which now has a sleeve. Yay! <laughs> I swear the sleeve took forever. I'm normally not someone who complains about sleeves, but this one just seemed to never get any longer and it doesn't help that I had to redo the cuff about four times so I kept finishing it and then rubbing back and then finishing it and then rubbing back so that took forever it just has one more sleeve it needs I'm gonna pick up stitches for that today and hopefully the next time you see this sweater it will be done and I will be showing you finished object pictures because it will have already gone to the recipient so this was, I don't think I have a label for this. This was Marina Bamboo in the color Boysenberry. This is a discontinued yarn. 
This is Knit Picks. The color is Amethyst Heather. I can't remember what the yarn line is, but it is worsted. And then this is also Knit Picks. This is Comfy Worsted in the color Celestial. And I didn't use a pattern for this either. Um, if you haven't been here long, then I very seldom use patterns. I just kind of look at things and reverse engineer them. Um, it, it's just the way that my brain works where I get an idea for something and then I just make it. I've never really felt a need to use a pattern unless I'm trying to learn something specific, like a construction technique or a specific stitch pattern or something like that. Um, because I've been so tired, I have not been working on the Eleonora stockings very much. Um, I've just done a couple of rounds in the last week or so. I'm trying to get those finished soon. It's just that those take a little bit more energy than most of my projects. So I had to set those aside for a while because I can't be stopped. I also cast something on, which I shouldn't have, but I saw these two yarns next to each other and they called to me. So this is going to be a vest. It'll be a button up vest and it just has a knit and pearl pattern on the body. This is Sherman's rib. And I did, um, a long tail cast on, but I did it with one strand of the light blue and one strand of the dark blue. So this is the same knit picks that I used on the other sweater. I have like 10 balls of this, so I have a ton. Um, and this is the Stroll Comfy, or not Stroll Comfy, Knit Picks Comfy Worsted in Celestial. And then this is Barocco Vintage, but I do not remember the colorway and I lost the belt and a long time ago. So I'm working on this. I have a few more inches to go before I split for the armhole openings. Um, but I'm enjoying this. This has been my, I want to work on something, but I have no brain. Um, it's, it, it's a very easy pattern to work on. Well, I'm not using a pattern, but um, it's very easy to stay consistent with this stitch pattern is what I mean. It doesn't take a whole lot of thought um, because I'm working on the body right now and not doing anything complicated. And then once I split for the arms and everything, I'm also going to trim the neckline, the button band, and the armholes in this darker blue with the uh, second color on there. So it'll be really cool when it's done. I haven't decided on buttons yet. That is a future me problem. I'll have a better idea of what I want once I have the vest finished. So the same friend that I made the socks and I'm making the sweater for is a member of the Society for Creative Anachronism, which if you don't know, that is a historical like costuming crafting group. And it's basically all of history up to about 1630. And the life of Eleonora fits neatly into that. So I thought that it would be fun. I've missed doing historical costuming and reenacting since I left the museum in Ohio. Um, I used to do Civil War era through about World War I. And really enjoyed that, but I haven't had a group of history nerds out here that I can join. So um, I'm hanging out with them. I started out with their archery group because if you didn't know, I used to be an archer. Um, I studied it very intensely in uh, middle and high school. And then once I started college, I didn't have the equipment or a place to practice anymore. So I had to give it up and recently got back into it. I'm really enjoying it. Um, it it's very stimulating in that it, it triggers the hyper focus in my brain. It makes my brain purr, but it's also very tiring because it's physical activity and I'm not used to it. 
and it's hot out and that wears me out more. So it's this weird dichotomy of it energizes me mentally, but it also wears me out physically. So it's been a challenge. I'm taking it very easily, very easy. I'm trying to work my way back into it. Um, but I've also been starting going to their more costumed group activities. And I went to one last weekend, which was just like this little picnic. We did cheese rolling. Um, Google that if you're not sure what it is. It's exactly what it sounds like. Um, and I needed a costume for it. And she was just like, you know, I'll let you borrow something. It's no big deal. And then I saw some fabric in my stash. And I'm just like, I'm an autistic historical costume nerd with no social life other than please come to this costume party with me. What do you think I'm going to do? So I made this. And I wore it. This is Kirtle. I was going for early 1400s. I will show pictures of me wearing it, but this is just cotton. It is lined in muslin, which I used this for my mock-up fabric. It's got some featherweight boning around the lacing channels. And I got it done enough for the event. I wore it. It was comfortable, like nothing was falling apart or anything. However, it was not done to the standard that I want. So I've been going through and for the event, I used the buttonholer on my sewing machine to make all of these little holes for the lacing. And now I'm going back through with embroidery floss just to finish them more nicely and make them look period. Um, I'm not using a buttonhole stitch or anything on this because they're already secured. I don't need to make them more secure. This is just aesthetics for the most part. And then um, it has a gap where the bodice attaches to the skirt so that you can reach inside and access your pockets. I have not made the pockets yet. That is on my list. Um, I've also got a different lacing to replace the, uh, the ribbon that I was using at the event because it wasn't great. So I have better lacing now. And then I also need to remake these straps because my pattern for the bodice changed as I was making it. So I need longer straps than what I actually made and uh, it didn't occur to me to change the length of the straps at the time. So they worked, but they were short and these just tie on with a ribbon. So one of the ribbons goes through this little hole right here. You tie a bow, it's very pretty, but I had like that much length between them and I should have had more like that. So I'm working on longer straps for this to replace. Um, I also got additional embellishments. So I have um, an applique and some ribbon to add to the front and I'm going to add two more featherweight boning channels to the front and to the back um, just to make it a little bit more supportive and then I want to make a belt to go with it as well as an apron in the pockets. Um, and I'm currently working on the hem. So the hem was too long when I worked the event. I just like very quickly basted the selvage up four inches so that I could walk. And it was still slightly too long. I had some issues with it. So what I'm doing is I am basting on extra wide double fold bias tape. And I am using this like hem tape. So it, um, in a lot of historical costumes, you will find a braid or some kind of trim at the bottom. So as the garment is worn, the hem of the garment is protected. And then as that trim wears out, the trim can just be replaced and it's more cost effective than having to replace an entire skirt or try and find something else to do with this skirt if it gets a hole in it or starts to show wear from running on the ground. So I'm almost halfway through with adding the hem tape. Um, I've actually got a crafting meetup with that group later today, and I'm hoping to finish this while I'm there. I'm also going to bring the Eleonora stockings with me to work on those as well. So that is, oh wait, I have one more. I almost forgot. I 
finished the first panel of the Wednesday sweater. So this is the front and then I have cast on for the back. So this is pretty much identical. It's just going to have a slightly different neckline to it. Um, I haven't gotten too much work done on this because in addition to the fatigue and everything, I discovered that my ergonomic mouse at work was not so ergonomic and it was causing me a lot of wrist pain. And that meant that I couldn't knit or crochet for about two weeks and I couldn't really crochet for about three because three or because um, crocheting is a little bit harder on my hands and my wrists. So I'm plugging along on those. We have a best. Are you a grumpy best? Oh, look at that grumpy face. So grumpy. So there wasn't a whole lot of crafting or anything going on, honestly. I just haven't had the energy for a whole lot lately. Um, of the one thing that I have been doing is research because I have a big project coming up that is not knitting or crochet related. Um, now I've already announced this over on my blog. The dates may change because of my health issues. Um, I have been doing research for a true crime podcast, and this podcast is all about the Highway of Tears, which is a section of road in British Columbia, Canada, where women in general, and specifically Native American women or First Nations women, tend to disappear or get murdered. And a lot of these cases flew under the radar for a lot of years. So I'm starting this podcast to help draw attention to their cases. Hopefully we can help bring people forward. Um, and I really want to focus on the victims more than anything else. So that I am hoping for a release date on Spotify of July 28th. But like I said, that is subject to change. Um, if you want to know the latest on that, make sure that you are following my blog or my Patreon where I will have the most up-to-date information on that. I wanted to have a website done by now, but I haven't even started it because like I said, I have just been so totally brain fried that I have not had the energy for that. I've barely been able to keep myself fed for the last couple of weeks. So it's a short one today. I just wanted to check in, let you guys know that I am still here. I'm okay. I'm struggling, but I'm okay. Um, I'm still working and designing and trying to be a human. It's just particularly difficult right now. But I hope that you stick around. I'm probably not going to post another video for about a month because I have other things that I need to focus on. Um, but I'm not pod fading or anything like that. I just, I only have the energy to focus on one thing at a time right now. And at the moment I want to batch, well batch record and get some episodes for the other podcast up first. So that way I have some breathing space and then I can come back to filming and writing and doing some of the other stuff that I want to work on. So that's it from me. I hope to see you soon. Um, if you miss me while I'm gone, you can always find me on Twitter, Instagram, or on my website. They're all linked right down below. I will see you later. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope that you have something cute and fluffy to cuddle with, even if it's grumpy. Ciao!